In this video, we're going to learn about SQL window functions. Let's start with a definition. So a window function is a function that performs calculations across a set of rows related to the current row. And where it differs from something like a regular aggregation function is that we also keep the individual row details alongside the computed result. This is probably easier to understand with an example. So let's get into it. So I found this data set on Kaggle called the City Bike Stations, and this has the bike sharing data in New York, so covering Manhattan and Brooklyn in particular. And so we're gonna download some of those CSV files and we'll create a table called Bike Stations from those CSV files. And then we're gonna filter out in case the station information is missing. And then also we're gonna add a timestamp field because it gives us epochs and we'll just move that into the Eastern time zone because it starts in UTC. Now, once we've done that, let's just have a quick look at what we've got. So you can see we've got a station ID, we've got the number of bikes available, we've got sometimes there's e-bikes and we've got a bunch of other information as well. And in this video, we're going to focus on general purpose window functions, starting with row number. Now this function returns the row number for each row within the window. And we'll start with something really simple. So we're gonna, we're gonna say, we're gonna get the station ID, we're gonna get the row number over Bracket. So over basically over everything over the whole table and then we'll call from the bike stations and we'll get 10 rows and you can see we get back those rows and we get the row number going down. We could also choose to order within that window so we could say okay we're going to do the same sort of query we're going to get the row number but this time we're going to do inside or over we're going to say order by the timestamp so it's going to then return everything sort of in timestamp order and you can again see we've got the row numbers coming down as well. Now that's not the same as writing a the, the first query where we say over everything and then doing the, the, the timestamp sorting afterwards. There's a subtle difference between those two things. So you can see here we've got completely different row numbers. They're not in uh, ascending order anymore. We can also partition by one or more columns within the, the over statement, which then creates multiple windows of rows, which is much more like what, what you'd normally be doing. So for example, we could say, uh, we're gonna get back the station ID, the station name, the number of bikes available, and then we're gonna get the row number partitioned by station ID, and maybe we'll order by timestamp uh, as well. And so there you can see now we've got the row numbers within a, a window for a particular station. We might tr then try to get the first row for each station. So what's the first entry that we've got in this data set for each station? And so perhaps we'll just put in a where clause and say, hey, where, we'll, we'll use the same query and then we'll say where row number equals one. And that doesn't actually work. So you see we get an error saying reference column RN not found in from clauses. And then you get a, a bit more explanation as well. Now the problem here is that the RN column isn't available in the where clause. And to understand why it's not available, uh, we need to think about the execution order of a SQL statement. So effectively it starts uh, from the from statement, so it executes that, then the where, then the group by, and then if we, for example, if we wanted to filter on a normal aggregate function, we could do that in the having, and then after the having, then we go to the select, and the select is actually where those window functions are added. So actually our, we've added in our row number after, way after the, the where clause actually happened. And so what we need to do instead is we need to use a common table expression or CTE. Uh, and so this is a named temporary result set that exists within the scope of a single statement and that can be referred to later. So effectively just means we can go, hey, with bike stations RN as, then put in our query up there and then further afterwards, we can then say, hey, select star from bike stations RN, get me the first row number. And now we get back the first entry in this data set for uh, all the different stations. So we can just see 10 of them here. So you can see a bunch of them that mostly happened sort of in the afternoon on the 1st of August, 2019. Now let's have a look at some other functions. So we're gonna have a look at lead and lag. So we'll start with lead. So lead gets us the next row. So imagine we're, we're in our first row, we're gonna get the next one. We'll be able to compare them up to each other if we want. And so we're gonna write the queries. So we're gonna get the number of bikes available on the current row. And then we're gonna call lead and then partition by station ID and order by time step again, get that uh, next value. And then we'll do compute the delta between them. And so now you can see we get for, it's got just Mac, McDougal Street and Prince Street. You can see we've got the timestamp, we've got the current value. You know, for example, on the first row, 28, then 29, and then next becomes current. So we've got 29, 29, then sort of next, obviously on the next row moves over and then it goes down by two. And then you can sort of see that they sort of move move down in, in, in harmony. Lag does the same thing, but it gets the previous row. And so if we write our query again, and this time we use lag instead of lead. And again, we can compute the delta. This time notice that for the first row, there is no previous, right? Because there, there wasn't a previous row. And so we get that we get some null values on the uh, on the previous and delta columns on the first row. And then this time the what was previous 
then becomes current uh, rather than rather than what was happening happened with the lag function, which was the other way around. And we, if we wanted to, we could even do both of these functions in the same query. But if we did that, we'd probably create a named window to use in both of those expressions. So our query would look like this. We can say, hey, I'm going to get the station ID and the station name. I'm going to call the lag function. But this time I'm going to say over station. And then I'm going to get that as previous. Then I'm going to get the, the number of bikes available as current. And then maybe I'll do lead as well over the station. I'll say I'm going to get it from the bike stations table. And then we can define the window station and just say that is partitioned by station ID and order by timestamp. And then finally, we can just order the results and get back 10, 10 records. And so now you can see we've got the previous value, the current value, and the next value. And those sort of move along, right? So current and next then become previous and current and sort of all the way, all the way down. And so that's just a brief look into what we can do with window functions. But we haven't even covered aggregate functions or framing. Those will have to wait until the next video.